Welcome to the Cinemagic Preview Show. On this edition, we will be previewing Yasmila Zvonich's war drama, Kovoris Ida. General Milanic is looking for civilian representatives among you in order to negotiate with him. Are there any volunteers? General Mladić traži predstavnike civilne vlasti da idu na pregovore s njim. Ima li nekog od njih ovdje među vama? Nek se javi. Someone will have to represent you. Ljudi, neko mora ići na pregovore sa Srbima. Hajde, javite se. Ma ne ima nikog ovdje, mora biti da se otrši krošumu. Tamo je Muharem, direktor kombinata, eto, može li on? They are suggesting that Muharem goes, he is a local businessman. I need two more people educated. Treba nam još dvoje ali obrazovanih. My husband was the school headmaster. If he goes with you, would you let my family come inside the base? You can't allow anyone else inside them. He's one of the most educated people in Srebrenica. He speaks German. You won't find anyone more suitable here. Can I have two more representatives? Treba nam još dva predstavnika. What do our young Cinemagic reviewers think? On today's episode, I'll be reviewing the film Quo Vidas Ida, which follows Ida, who is a translator for the UN, after her small town Srebrenica is invaded and she and her family, along with many other citizens, are taken to a camp looking for shelter. It is directed by Yasmila Zabonic. The events of the film take place in Bosnia in 1995, in the town of Srebrenica. Ida is a translator working for the UN. When the Bosnian Serb army take over her town, her family are among the citizens seeking refuge in the UN camp. Kovaz Ayuza explores events during the 1995 massacre in the town of Srebrenica during the Bosnian War, in which more than 8,000 Bosniak men and boys were killed by members of the Bosnian Serb army. This uh, film is a war drama that's set in Bosnia in the summer of 1995 and it just follows the uh, heartbreaking story of a lady, uh, Ida, who works as a translator for the UN peacekeepers just to pass information between the civilians of the town and the peacekeepers themselves. We follow the story of Ida, played by Jasna Duricic. Uh, Aida is a translator and interpreter um, for the UN in the UN safe zone in the middle of Srebrenica. She has a rather unique position in that as a translator and someone who um, takes part in these political meetings and the bureaucratic side of war, um, she has a little bit of influence that she tends to use to, um, to protect her family and try and look after her family. From the very beginning, from as soon as I started watching this film, the tone was set straight away with you know, a mix of um, like medium close-ups and mid shots of Ida and her family and there was no dialogue, it was just like intense background music and like uh, longingly looking shots. It really did set the uh, tone for like a gloomy atmosphere. I knew it wasn't going to be an easy watch. This film, it does depict the massacre but it depicts it in such a way that is quite subdued. It, I mean, this film depicts a war, but it is, in, it is in no way a violent film, which caught me off guard. There's, It's not, you know, a bloody combat. It's very much focused on people and a microcosm of people in one location. One of the greatest strengths of this film, in comparison to other war films that I've seen that have made their mark in the last 10, 15 years, 
is the focus on the individual and the plight of the individual. Um, instead of focusing on the, the, the grand scheme of things and the effect of war on, on a country or on a larger community, uh, that is kind of taken under the microscope. Um, and we get to see the effect on one particular individual, um, which provides a sense of intimacy and a real connection for us as an audience um, into the plight of these people um, and how difficult it would be to, to live through the, the, the darkest times of war and the ordeals that they have to suffer through. It is quite an intense watch in terms of the story. I was not familiar with a lot of the uh, events of the Bosnian war um, and of course I was kind of confused at the beginning um, grasping what was going on with the story and what was the conflict but I think it is a really important watch especially if you aren't familiar with this uh, particular moment in history. After watching this piece there is no doubt that it is a very, very powerful uh, documentation of the absolute heartbreaking reality for so many families and only 25 years ago and I didn't actually know that this um, event happened until watching this uh, show. It was also a film that I came away from with a heaviness in me because it depicts something so horrific. It's the way in which it depicts it. It depicts it in a very subtle way. Corvadas Ayuda is a very difficult film to watch at times. It captures the chaos of this mountain history viscerally. But I think what really enhances the film is that it does so through the eyes of a UN translator named Ayuda, whose character occupies a very interesting position. She. She's a great character to have as your protagonist because she sort of portrays both sides quite brilliantly and we sympathise with her and the actress who portrays her is fabulous. All of the acting in this film is actually fabulous. Yasna Duracic provides an incredible performance um, showing the incredibly fierce maternal instincts that she has to uh, to protect her family at all costs in the middle of this, of this raging war. Um, but while also getting across the vulnerability um, of the character in the moments of powerlessness whenever the events just seem to spiral more and more out of control um, as the bureaucratic side of war has no effect and she is powerless to stop anything from happening. These characters really bring you into the world, especially the stunning performance from the titular character, Ida. I think uh, she is a wonderful, strong, cunning, smart, brave character. Um, the actress who plays her does a wonderful job. Uh, she provides um, glimpses of warmth and hope into uh, an otherwise very dire situation. Um, and there are definitely elements of that throughout the film. The script in this film was superb and it keeps you hooked the whole way through. And there's flashbacks to what was happening before the war, which bring in so much pathos and there's a poignancy that is just laden throughout this film. Early on in the film there is a flashback that Ida has to when she entered a beauty pageant and I thought that this was fantastically implemented into the film while it greatly contrasted the overall theme and tone of war. I did particularly enjoy the cinematography in this. I feel like the way it was lit, the shadows, the use of a lot of close-ups really, really did drive home how uncomfortable it was supposed to make you feel. It was supposed to build the tension for the viewers and I feel like it came across on screen impeccably well. Throughout the film, there are a number of long contemplative shots which really allow the emotion of each character to settle and just show how upset and how confused they are with their situation. The camera work in this film is used really well um, to kind of portray the, the, the instability and the, the, the way the events are spiralling out of control and the idea is part of to stop those. Um, we see this obviously through the slow pacing at first before anything starts to go wrong. The pacing is um, intentionally very slow. Um, but as soon as events kick off, um, you start to see more and more panic um, in everyone, but in particular in Aida. And that is seen through the use of the handheld camera that comes in and becomes more and more frantic as the film goes on, culminating in absolute frantic and devastating climax. Technically, this film is superb, I believe. The camera angles, the lighting, the sound, um, everything looked very crisp and clear. In terms of the cinematography, I thought it was wonderful. There was a wonderful balance of 
long takes um, close up sh uh, shots of the action it really allowed the action to take center stage and these characters and what they were going through which I think was uh, an incredible part of the story and that really drives the story along. The film wisely doesn't tend to use non-diegetic music to complement any of the uh, difficult events throughout the film. It doesn't try to hold the viewer's hand or manipulate them in any way because ultimately the images on display are enough to elicit very strong reactions from viewers. Overall, I would give this film a 4 out of 5 as I find the beginning a little bit slow but as the film picked up I became more and more engrossed in the action and the characters and I thought that the end of the film was absolutely perfect, albeit heartbreaking. It was an amazing conclusion to the film. It is a superb film, a superb watch and I feel like it's something that everyone should watch. Well, I think this film is a really impressive achievement. It's emotional, it's striking to watch and I think if you want to learn more about a moment in history like this it's really compulsory viewing because it's so candid in its approach towards the material. So I think this film is definitely worth watching and I highly highly recommend it. It left me with a lot of questions and wanting a desire to know more uh, after the film and I think that is a mark of a truly good film that has done its job. Um, I would recommend it. I give it a 4 out of 5. Um, I definitely think you should watch this film, Kovora Saida. Not only is the film dark, uh, gritty and utterly compelling as a watch for an audience, um, I think it's an incredibly important piece of work in that it helps to highlight and make sure we never forget the events of the Srebrenica massacre and the Bosnian war as a whole. Um, and ensures that we all realise the importance and the monumental impact that this had on Bosnian history and European history um, and is really something that should never be forgotten. Koval de Saida, 5 out of 5 stars. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe!